Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And today I'm going to go ahead and take you through some of the advanced features for the video pad professional video editing software that I use for my channel. Uh, I just did a how to video on that channel a couple months ago. And there's been a lot of questions and a lot of comments. People want to know how to do this or do that. So what I did is I went through and looked at all of your requests that you guys asked for in the comment section on the video as of December of 2020. And I picked out the features that I can definitely show you how to do. Now, there isn't much here that I can't show you how to do that you haven't requested so far. So we're going to take you through those different features. And at some point, if I can figure out how to do it, I'll have some time breaks in this video so you can click on the features that you want to see. I'll try to segment the video on YouTube uh, so you guys can go right to those features that you want to learn about. I'm going to show you two of the more complicated features initially. Then I'll show you some of the simple effects that you can use for audio and video. And then after that, I'll give you just a couple quick pointers that you can use yourself if you want to play around with the video effects and the audio effects without getting too intimidated by the program. So if you're watching this video and you know nothing about VideoPad Professional, I'm going to ask you to stop right now and do one of two things. One, go back and watch my initial video. It's called Part 1, The Basics of Video Creation with VideoPad Pro. I will put a link to that in the description box of this video. And and I will also put it in the comment section down below. And just for the heck of it, I'll put it at the end of uh, this video you're watching right now, just in case you want to go back and watch some of that stuff again, because I'm not going to cover the basics of how to import video or a lot of the simple features. There's a couple things I need to show you one more time, but we're not going to spend the time like we did before discussing the basics of the program. This is for advanced features. OK, this is stuff you guys have been asking for. So I'm going to hopefully be able to give that to you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. So I've got two video clips that are just sitting in the top left corner, and I talked about how to get those video clips in there in the first video. I've got an audio file because somebody was asking me, how do you put music to a video? We're going to show you how to do that. And then we've also got just a basic image, which is what we need if you want to learn how to do some of the basic zoom effects or how to even insert a photo in a video, say, while you're talking or even do some sort of a basic uh, slideshow. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and take some video footage of my, of my Corgi. And we're going to drop it on the timeline like we've done before. Uh, one of the first questions that we had was, well, how do you crop a video? How do you take the dead space off the beginning and the end? I thought I'd cover that in a little bit of detail, but it's really no big deal. We can show you how to do it a second time. So there's some time space here at the beginning where there's really nothing going on. And let's just say I don't want to put that in the video. What you can do is you can take your little red slider down here, okay, your, little bar, your little bar that I showed you in the first video, drop it wherever you want to start the video, click on the scissors, Okay, click on the clip on the left side, hit your delete key, boom, it's gone. Now you've also got the little trash can in the top right corner that'll light up anytime you have a clip of the film selected. Okay, so now we're all set to go. Uh, if you want to have a nice fade in transition for the video, again, something I showed you in the first video, in the top left corner, click on fade in. I just leave it at the default, that's 0.970 of a second. It chooses what it thinks is the best fade in. You can put two seconds if you want to, or three seconds, and we'll go ahead and click right there. Now, the other way to get rid of dead space in a video, aside from using the slider and delete, is to just simply grab the video clip and then just click and drag, like I'm doing over here on the right-hand side. Okay, so you're gonna have a little bar that's gonna pop up a bracket, hold down your button, your mouse button, or your sensor pad, or whatever you're doing your work on, and simply drag, and that's gonna delete out the clicks when you let go, and the footage is now gone, okay? Or you can pull it back out if you wanna bring it back, which is kinda of nice. Uh, if you wanna do a quick transition from one scene to the next, again, this kinda of relates back to the first video, just grab your second clip, drop it on the timeline, there's a transition box right here that you can push, click on that, and then you've got all these different effects that you can choose from. If you don't know what to do and you don't have a lot of time, click on crossfade. It looks, it looks professional. Okay, it just simply fades from one click to the next. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that little fade in because I don't want that right now. So we're going to eliminate that real quick. We'll click on no transition. Now there was another question somebody had is, well, how do I move clips once I drop them in the timeline? So this is the first advanced feature that I want to show you. Uh, you simply grab the clip that you want, which is the second clip of my cat and you simply pull it forward over the previous film clip. Now, if you drop it anywhere, it's gonna split that film clip in half. It's gonna show the original clip, the cat, and then the dog. If you pull it all the way to the beginning of the timeline and let go, it's now gonna switch the clips. So that's one way you can do it, okay? The other option is just to go through and delete and drop them in the, uh, oops, sorry about that, uh, drop them in the order that you want to. So moving it is very simple, but we're gonna go back to the original unaffected film clip, okay? So go ahead and drop it in right now. Now, the first major thing that I want to show you is somebody said, well, how do I show multiple videos happening in the same frame? Let's say I want to have like 
four family members, each one's doing something different, a different video clip at the same time. So it's pretty simple. I'm going to show you how to, we'll use the same film clip and we're going to put it in the film four times in a row. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take the, uh, the footage of the Corgi and then we go ahead and drop that in again a second time. Okay, drop it on the timeline like I've showed you before, video on video. So we got video track one, video track two. Let's drop it in again on the top. It's going to make space. Okay, now you have video three. And you've got a little slider bar on the right-hand side. I didn't really cover that in a lot of detail. So depending on your screen size, you may be able to see this or you may not. If you slide that, you can see all three video tracks. And then you've also got audio track one, two, and three down below. Okay. Now, the next thing you do is we'll grab that video clip again. We're going to put this video clip in here four times in a row and drop it up on the top. There you go. We now have four basically video clips of the same thing going on in a row. So we're going to go ahead and just start off with uh, video track one. So click on video track one so it's highlighted. The audio is now, is now highlighted. So we're going to set this up. This is going to be the first little box of video that's going to be playing in the top left corner. Okay, And you can put one or two scenes going at the same time or three or whatever you want to do. So what you do is go on over to um, video effects and click the little down arrow and press motion. Okay, now we're basically going to have to do this four times in a row. So here's all of your settings for your video clip, and we need to basically shrink it down. Okay, so you're going to go to scale and go ahead and shrink it down to, oh, I don't know, let's put it at, let's just go point, uh, let's see, 0.45. Okay, 0.45. See what it did to the video clip? It's now shrunk the video clip down. Grab the video clip, put that in the top left corner, and just drop it. So we're gonna go 0.45, that's gonna be the size of the video, okay? So we do 0.45 over here, 0.45 down below, 0.45 again, we can put all four videos in the same frame. Okay, now that's done, you can click the little X and it's gonna disappear. Now click on video track two, okay? Now we gotta go do that again. Trust me, after you do this enough times, you'll be really good at it. Uh, click on motion again, and this time we're gonna go 0.45 again. Okay, so we're going to take the scale down to 0.45. You can choose whatever size you want. I'm going to go ahead and push this in the top right corner, and I'm going to let go. Okay, now what we're going to do is grab our slider on the right-hand side and just pull so we can see video track 3 and video, video track 4. We're going to take video track 3, we're going to put that in the bottom left-hand corner. So click on that track so it's highlighted. Go on over to video effects again, choose motion, okay? And now what you're going to do is hang on a second because I got a phone call. Okay, let's go ahead and continue. We got that phone call out of the way. Hey, life happens. All right, so we clicked on video track number three. We again, again went up to video effects, and then we went over on uh, motion. And we've got the box right here. Let's go ahead and cut that scale down to 0.45. So again, that's downsizing the video feed itself. Okay, so we're going to put it at 0.45. We're going to put that in the bottom left-hand corner. Now, again, you can set this up however you want, and you'll have to kind of learn how to tweak the sizes to, to work best for you. Now, after that, we have video track four. Click on that, and you want to go up again to video effects, and then go on over to motion. Okay, over there, you're going to go down to scale, and we'll put that at 0.45. And that one's going to go in the bottom right-hand corner. Now, one thing about this is depending on what you're using for a computer, uh, that can have, you know, there can be some serious processing wait time involved in it. I know even on my machine, there's still sometimes a delay. So just be patient with it. It all depends on the hardware that you're running. All right, so let's go and put that video down in the bottom right hand corner. And we're just going to let that sit and process for just a minute. And we're going to come back and see what it looks like uh, when it's all said and done. So hang tight, guys. Okay, so uh, once it's processed, this is basically what it looks like. It's not perfect, it's not perfect, pretty, but it is functional. So we don't need the audio feed coming through four times in a row, okay, because that's gonna give us you know, a lot of distortion and feedback and stuff like that. So grab the slider on the right-hand side like I'm doing, and we're gonna cut out audio track four, so you click on the speaker, and then we're going to mute that and click okay. Click on audio track three, click the speaker, click on mute, click on okay. And then audio track two, okay, click on mute, click on okay. Notice how it's putting little X's in there. So now the only actual audio feed that's going to be coming through is going to be audio, tra it's going to be audio track one and or video number one, okay? So we'll go ahead and cut that out, and we're going to take a look at this and see how it looks. So we're going to grab the slider, and let's, let's press play. All right, so I love my dog. All 
All right, all right, all right, enough of that. Okay, so that's uh, the, the basics of what you're gonna do if you wanna put four videos in one. Let's say you got four different family members, you got four different film clips, or maybe you wanna do some kind of a motion sequence like maybe hitting a ball, or you're doing a demonstration video, or step one, step two, step three. Now, the one thing to remember about this is you've got full control over each track. So if you wanted to put text on one track, like put a person's name and another person's name, or step one or step two, you can do that by simply adding text like I showed you how to do in the first video. Uh, and if we got some time here at the end, I might just show you how to add text again. In. There were really no specific text requests last time in this video, so I'm going to assume that you guys understand how to do that now. Okay, I'm going to delete all this stuff and we're going to start back over again. I'm going to show you how to do split screen. All right, so split screen is really simple. Now you can use the same video clip if you want to, or you can use two different video clips. It pretty much depends on you. So we're going to go ahead and put the dog on the left and the cat on the right. So go ahead and drop your clip of whatever you're showing the first time. Okay, then grab your second clip and just bring it down to the timeline and just go ahead and let go. Now, if you were to just simply play it, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's gonna show the cat. So video track two gets the priority here instead of video track one. Now, all you have to do is click on the first video track and then go up to video effects and then go down to split screen. Okay, now it's gonna ask you, do you want track one to be on the left side or do you want it to be on the right side? That's gonna be up to you. We're gonna put the dog on the left and we're gonna put the cat on the right. So the dog is gonna be on the left. Okay, that whole video has been moved over to the left. Now you can change it. You can go horizontal if you'd rather go that way or you can go vertical or grid. You have got a ton of options. We're just gonna stick with uh, the original default if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Okay, so we're set for horizontal. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and just uh, close this out. Now go ahead and clip on, click on your second clip that you want to put on the other side of the screen. Go on up to video effects and then click on split screen again. Because remember, each video feed is basically treated as its own source and you can do it to whatever you want. We're going to put the cat on the right side. Okay. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and just close that out. Now if you ever need it back, all you have to do is just uh, click on the film track itself. And if you click on FX down here in the bottom left-hand corner, it's gonna bring up your special effects box so you can get to it right away. If you wanna get rid of any effect, whether it's video or audio, et cetera, click on the little X for the effect itself, and that's gonna make it disappear. It even says delete effect. Okay, now if we go back and check out the video when we're watching it, let's see what it looks like now. Oh, hey, by the way, we're gonna be playing the audio for both tracks, so we'll just ignore that. But you can exit out the audio like I showed you before. Um, here you can click on the speaker click on mute and so on. But I want the audio on both sides just because it's a fun video and we'll just see what it looks like, okay? So grab the slider, pull it back, click play. Boom, there's a split screen right there. The, uh, the cat's a lot more calm than the uh, dog is obviously. Oh, there he shows up. All right, so those are the basics of how you do a split screen. It's very simple. Um, you know, obviously we can grab the tracks and make them fit so they're the same length. You just grab the, the end of the track and pull it whatever way you want to on the front side or the back side. Don't forget you can add your fades if you want to to make it look nice and professional. Top left corner of those boxes and you're all set to go. So I do apologize if I'm talking kind of quick because this is going to be a long video. And a lot of the stuff I'm telling you how to do, you've already learned it in the first video. So hopefully you remember how to do those things. So you've got the fade and it looks nice. Okay, let's go ahead and pause it. And we're going to show you how to do just a few more basics and how to modify certain film clips. So, so hang tight. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do, do is show you how to add a soundtrack to your video if you want to have a song playing in the background and so on. So go ahead and drag and drop your video file. Now this video file does have audio in it, which I can leave if I want to, but I'm going to turn the audio down just a little bit so when I'm talking, you're not going to hear it. You're basically just going to hear the music playing in the background. I could mute it all the way, but I'll leave it at like 30% so you can hear me talking a little bit. Okay, we'll exit out of there. Now I've got an audio file. I go to bensound.com because they've got a lot of free MP3s that you can use. And uh, I don't have to worry about copyright issues and stuff like that. So long as you give them credit in your YouTube video, you don't get hit with copyright infringement. So go ahead and grab your MP3, grab your audio track that you've dropped into the box. No matter what kind of media you put in this box, the computer automatically knows if it's a video file, an audio file, a picture, and so on. Grab your MP3 and go ahead and drop it. And that's gonna put the sound in your video. Now you can grab that MP3 and move it wherever you want to have it start or stop at any point. You can make the video track longer or shorter by grabbing the edge. You can grab your little slider, click the scissors. It's highlighted, hit the delete key. Boom, that track is gone. That part's gone from it. You can do whatever you want. So I'm gonna put the original back in there and we'll drop it and you'll see what it looks like when we're playing. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and add that fader again so it looks nice. There's the fade in duration. 
Now, if you want to make the uh, music louder or softer, you click on the speaker as usual, and you've got a slider right here. I could just keep it. We'll just keep it at 100%. We'll jam out here. All right, so here is the soundtrack added to the dog. Here's the thing about this. This is an MP3 track, and it's not the highest quality audio. If you had your own recordings and stuff, it would sound a lot better. Um, I think if you buy a membership to Ben Sound, you get a higher you get a higher fidelity download because the MP3s are kind of tinny sounding. But this is just again for a demonstration for you guys. So, all right, so that's essentially how you add the music. Now, if you wanted to do a slideshow to music, it would be the same process. You'd simply drop your audio down here, and then grab yourself a picture or pictures, and just drop them in your timeline. Drop a picture in and then stretch that photo out and you can essentially have yourself a nice little photo show. You can drop your pictures in the timeline and make uh, and, and make, you know, photo, whatever you call it, uh, photo shows with the family and stuff like that. Now, I only have this one photo because I'm just going to show you how to do some of the effects with it, okay? So that's essentially what you would do. You could drop more pictures, drop more pictures in the timeline and you are all set to go. Okay, so the one thing I did not show you in the last video, at least I don't think so, maybe I showed you how to do it, I don't know. We'll go and drop this back in the timeline, is how to bring a photo into your video. Let's say we want a picture in the top right corner while a video is playing. So we've dropped our video down on the timeline, click in your top left corner over here on images, grab your photo and basically drop it wherever you want the picture to show up in the video. We'll just go ahead and put it like 10 or 15 seconds in, okay? Now again, you can grab the edges of that photo to make it longer or shorter. You can make that photo transition in by clicking in the top left corner, just like you do with the video, okay? And uh, we'll make it fade out. Now, we wanna make sure that this picture is in the top right corner, because if we don't, this picture is going to dominate the video as soon as the timer gets to it. Boom, see what happens there? We don't want that. You could do that if you want to. That's a cool effect. That's totally up to you. But click on the photo and then go up to video effects, go on motion, and we need to move this. So we're gonna scale it down a little bit. Let's make the picture just uh, 0.51 of its normal size. Now you can grab the axes dials up here and move the picture around. I find it's easier just to grip it, just to grab the picture, you know, using the little hand. And we're just gonna drop it in the top right corner. So this little outline you see here in black and white, those are the outlines of the photo, okay? So when you're watching the video, the picture is gonna show up in the top right corner. Now granted, those lines are gonna be gone. In fact, we can watch it if you want. Now, there was a question, and unfortunately, I don't have an answer for you on this, and then there might be something in the more advanced versions of this program, whether it's a video or a photo. Somebody said, is there any way you can soften these edges on the picture itself? And honestly, I don't know how to do that. Uh, I don't know how to soften the edges of the video either. It only lets you treat the video with, you know, you can make the video bigger or smaller or put it wherever you want in the clip itself, but I do not know how to soften these edges or add any kind of effects to those edges at all. So I do apologize. That's the one question. I don't think I'll be able to answer tonight. So now the next question is, you know, well, how do I zoom in on something? What do I do? What are some of the effects I can do? Well, for the video itself, um, let me just show you when you drop your video clip down here in the timeline. Pause that for a second. Uh, all you have to do is click again up on video effects and, and all these different things you can do to it. Um, I don't know about necessarily zooming in specifically while you're watching it. You can zoom in on photos and I'll show you how to do that too. Like if you wanna add some special effects, I mean, you can change the position of the video, you can rotate it, you can flip it so everything is backwards. You can add motion blur to it so it kind of feels like a dream sequence or like somebody's about to pass out. Um, somebody was asking about zoom. How do you zoom in on a clip itself, okay? Let's say that I want this magnified. It's very simple. Click on the clip, click on video effects, click on zoom, and then from there, uh, whatever you cut out is going to be the borders that are not going to be in the video, and everything else is basically going to be magnified. So I'm cutting out a section right now, and it's going to just simply magnify the part that is not dark. Okay, so then if you go back and watch it, it's actually going to cut out that footage at the beginning, and it's now actually magnified into the dog. So zooming is very, very simple. It's just a matter of messing with these sliders and getting it basically how you want it. Now, if you don't want that zoom effect in there, you can simply click on the arrow and the X and you're all done. Now, the other question that we had, and unfortunately this is gonna be the other one I won't be able to answer. Um, we're gonna go and drop our audio track in. Somebody said, well, how do I have a visualizer running while my song is playing in the background? Let's just say I want something that's more finger changing on the screen. I was not able to figure out a way to do that um, I can tell you this, we can talk about some of the audio effects real quick. So we've got the, the song playing right now. Okay, the audio is right here. 
And you can do this for your video also. It's just a matter of clicking down on the audio. Um, when you go up to audio effects in the top right corner, you can do all these different effects to your song or voice. You can have a chorus-like effect to it. You can add distortion to it if you want to. For the voice, I don't know how to modify voice so it sounds like a monster or voice special effects. I don't think you can do that with this particular software. You can slow your voice down, which also unfortunately slows down the video. You've got a full equalizer control. So those of you that are really into audio, you audio file can maybe uh, mess around with that. You can amplify the sound to make it louder. Now, there is this thing called VSD plugins, which I've never dealt with before. This might be something that you can use, but I don't know if this is just like video studio plugin software. So in terms of an actual visual visualizer, say you want to take your favorite song and have something playing in the background, if you could take that visualizer and make its own little video clip, you could drop it in here and make a video if you wanted to. But to have the program have the audio generate some sort of constantly changing pattern on the screen, that is something that I don't know how to do. And I don't believe you can do it with this particular software, just to answer that question. So the next question a person had for me was, well, how do you rotate the video? Say I want to take this video and turn it on its side or flip it upside down, what can I do? Well, drop the video in the timeline or find the section of video that you want to modify click on it okay now you can also have established borders of effects so like you can click on the scissors here and do something different from this portion than you're doing from this portion or maybe you want to have the video rotate like 90 degrees in each portion well to do that it's pretty simple so you would just simply click on the portion of the video or the entire video for that matter that you want to rotate go on up to video effects and then there's rotate and flip now when that happens we're going to rotate this first clip 90 degrees okay Second clip, go on up to video effects, go on over to rotate and flip, okay, click on 180 degrees, okay, and now go on over to, we'll click on this third clip, we're going to go ahead and just bring him back, click on video effects, flip, oh, I think we're going to do this one at, whoops, okay, let's go ahead and make a separate track here, I want to make sure we can do 360, we we'll click on the scissors, this third track, Going up to video effects, rotate and flip, rotate it uh, 270 degrees, and then this next track is simply going to come back to normal. So if we go watch it, it's just going to show it um, playing in different angles and sizes and so on. Now, I don't have any transitions in between here. I guess we can put those in also if we want to. So you can click on the little box and just click on crossfade, make it a little bit fancier. Let's bump ahead a little bit so you can watch it from here. Now, here's the thing, guys. Because we're rotating and it's almost like turning your camera sideways, so you're not going to get that full screen effect that you're looking for. Okay, but again, it at least shows you how to modify the video so that you can rotate it uh, 90 degrees each time if you want to. That was a request that somebody had. A uh, person was asking me, is it possible to delete the audio track from the video itself? No, not that I know of. But if you click on the speaker and click on mute, it basically has the same effect. Your audio is still there, but you're not going to hear it when you're watching the video because it's been muted. So that's something that you don't have to worry about. Okay, so before we get into some of the cool video effects that you can do on your video clips while you're using them, if you have somebody who's hearing impaired and you need to generate captions or produce captions, there's a closed captioning feature. You know, when you watch a YouTube video, you can have it auto-generate closed captions, and they're okay for the most part. Uh, this program does not have the best auto-captioning function out there, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. So you click on the video so it's highlighted. Go on over here to Subtitles. Click on auto generate. It's going to generate the subtitles automatically. And I was saying, hey, boy, how you doing? Come on, boy, let's play, right? That's what I was saying to the dog. Uh, this is what it said. Don't need and where us clearly have blue and white. Who knows what that has? The attitude. Okay, this is not going to work for us, right? So go ahead and exit out of it. Discard it. Go up to subtitles again. Now, if you don't mind doing this, let's say you just got to do some simple captions for people. You can click down here in the text box and you can put whatever you want for subtitles. Okay, it's very simple to add your own. And I'm just typing in this little box here and you can you can add these subtitles if you want to. So that's an option for you if you wanna put your own manual subtitles in and you've got options for them for like size and placement and stuff. Otherwise, it's just gonna put them right there in the bottom. So that's how you add subtitles if you have somebody who's hearing impaired and you need to put those subtitles in the video itself.
Okay, now, so for this last portion, this is the most fun. If you really want to learn how to use a program, here's an easy way to do it. Just drag and drop a video down here. If you really want to see what all those special effects are about, click on video effects, but then drag the slider down a little bit and look at all these options. It does have an auto leveling feature that'll bounce out the colors for you. So if you've got a video that doesn't look very good, it will brighten it and make it look better, especially if it's dim. Uh, you have a green screen option if you want to. What I like is the filters. I think somebody that said, how do you add like Sophia? I think it's Sophia Sepia. Or how do you make something black and white? Well, it's pretty simple. Make sure your clip is selected. Click on black and white. Boom, the video is now in black and white. So you can see the dog. Okay, now if I don't want black and white for the clip, my effects box is right here. You can click on the little X right here and you can delete the effect. You can keep this open the whole time if you want just to play around with it. There's a neat one on here that I wanted to try that I had not seen before. So let's try night vision. <laughs> there you go. If you want to be tactical, make your video look like it's nighttime. There you go. Nighttime camera stuff going on. That is pretty cool. So there's your night vision effect. I thought that was pretty sweet. If we don't want it, you just simply click on it and uh, it's gone over on the box on the left-hand side. If uh, this ever disappears, remember you just click on the FX box, it'll bring up that special effects box for you again. Uh, you can make the video shake if you want to. It can make the, oh, this is a neat one. This place in 360, it kind of gives it like a, a fisheye effect when you're watching the video, which is kind of cool. And it, it does that. It's gonna focus on just the center of the video itself, but it adds kind of a cool, you know, bubble fisheye effect like you get on a camera which is pretty cool. So that's something you can do if you want to add a little fun little effect like that. Oh, let's see, what else do we have here? I think we've covered a lot of the main ones that you guys have been asking about. Uh, if you, again, you want to do Sophia, it's right here. Uh, if you want to make it look X-ray, there's a cartoon version here. It'll convert it. Oh yeah, it'll convert your videos to cartoons. If you get into the artistic filters, click on cartoon. It then makes it look like, was there a Keanu Reeves movie that looked like this one time? Scanner Darkly maybe? I don't know. But uh, anyway, <laughs> you can make kind of a cool looking like reverse image cartoon with it, which is pretty sweet. So all I'm doing is just testing out the different filters with the same film clip. It's, and you know, if, ever, if something gets messed up, all you gotta do is delete it and just start back over again and you can play around with the filters some more. So don't, don't be afraid to try the, the video filters. That's basically all I did to learn how to use the advanced features that I'm showing you today. There's also a sensor feature, a uh, sensor part of the clip via pixel, pixelating or blacking it out. Uh, I guess I haven't ever done that before, but you can grab your box and put it wherever you want. So if you got something you want to take out of the clip, let's say the uh, we don't want people to to recognize my dog. I suppose I can put the box down here. Oh, he's going to be all over the place. Sorry about that. <laughs> I keep playing it. But anyway, uh, that's how you would add the, the little feature if you want it. Let's go back to uh, effects here. And we'll get rid of that. Okay, so you do have your little sensor bar you can add if you want to. Like if you've got a license plate or something you want to blank out, you have that option. There's a lot of stuff here that I didn't even realize that we had. You can record your own narrations as an audio clip. So you can do that uh, in the program itself, which makes it pretty cool. Uh, man, you've just got so much stuff you can do. So that's why I encourage you to just check it out and do what you want to do. Hey, it's holidays, right? Snowflakes. We're going to put some snowflakes in here. Looks like it's adding some snowflakes. Okay, if this is going to take an hour, I'm going to come back here in a second. All right, hang tight. Let's let the snowflakes load and we'll see what it looks like. Oh, there we go. Oh, hey. All right. You know, we are about a week out from Christmas, aren't we? There you go. All right. So, you know, you can add that special effect if you want. If you don't want it, click on the little X and it goes bye-bye. Again, just, you know, I, I, I taught myself how to use this program without using really any other instruction online. Just simply trial and error and just messing around with it. Um, otherwise, you can do those things if you want to. Last thing I was going to show you is if you go to uh, audio effects, or no, 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 go over to add text. There is a clock option and a counter. So you can add a counter, a clock, a stopwatch, a timer. So if you want to have just like the time go through in a video, however long you draw it out is how long the clock is going to be showing up on the camera. So watch the uh, bottom of the screen here. So you can add a little clock feature, which is pretty cool. You can basically have it start, have it start wherever you want. So <laughs> sorry you've had to listen to me <laughs> howling at the dog there uh, in this entire video. So that's basically it, guys. Those are all the questions you've asked me so far. When your video is done, you just go up to export video, click on video file. I have it set for auto match content, 1920 by 1080, which is just 1080p HD. I keep it on variable, smart max, 60 frames per second. 
name the file, whatever you want, click on create, and it will create a video file that you can upload to YouTube. So that is it. Thank you for watching the video. I know it's been 30 minutes, but we've covered a lot of different features. Hopefully I covered everything that you want to know. Um, you know, if you need to add any text to the video, it's pretty simple. You just go up to add text, uh, go up to simple text overlay, type whatever you want in the box. Okay. And uh, click off to the side and you've got yourself a text box that's here that you can use. I showed you how to do this in the first video. And you can add effects to the text if you want to. I'll let you kind of play around with that. You can make the text go up or go down, coming from the side, pretty much do uh, whatever you want it to do. So those are just some of the options. Uh, let's see, last thing before I forget here with the pictures, let's go and drop a photo in here real quick. Let's get rid of this other material. We don't need that. We don't need that. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you, I did show you how to do that little zoom in feature. People were asking about that. Uh, if you want to have it zoom in from a certain side, just go on up to video effects and then click on pan and zoom. And from here, you've got a ton of options. So if you want the picture to pan in from the left side to the right, or if you want it to zoom in from the lower left hand corner, you can add all those features. So you do have, you do have that as an option if you want to like panning it from left to right, you can simply choose where you want it to pan in from. And then if you watch it, it'll just simply pan in and it'll go from left to right. So you can add those features if you want to. Uh, I've tried doing that on the video and it doesn't seem to affect my video itself. So those special effects, I think they're only going to work on your pictures, just so you know. Anyway, that's it. You guys have fun. Play around with the program. Ask me more questions. If you have them, I'll do my best to answer them in this part too. And who knows, maybe we'll make a part three and get into even more features. So thank you for your time. You guys are great. It's been wonderful getting the... Uh, getting the, the feedback from you about this video. Those of you have told me that you made your first video for the first time and some of you are doing it for business, some of you are doing it for class. That's great. That's why I made these videos was to help people out and make it as simple as possible. So thank you for watching Advanced Features of Video Pad Professional by NCH Software. If you get that software, I think you get like a five or seven day trial with it. And then after that, they're going to want you to pay for it. I think you can make and export one video with a watermark on it within like five days, or you're allowed to at least make one video. Try the software, see what you think. Um, I'm not getting anything from NCH software from this. I've bought copies of it. In fact, every time I buy a different computer, I got to buy another copy of it. So, I mean, I pay for it like everybody else. It varies between, I think, 50 to $75 depending if they have a sale or not. Um, otherwise, that's it. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. You're great. Uh, have fun, be safe, and we will talk to you soon. All right, take care.